yeah there we go what's going on everybody welcome back uh today we're going to be working on this case 580k backhoe uh as you can tell we got a really bad leak here uh, on the cylinder that uh swings the boom around this thing getting a little age on it so i'll be doing more mechanic videos as you know more problems i have with it if you didn't see the last video of me working on the injection pump i'll link that up here and uh, i'll start a playlist on this uh backhoe so with that being said uh let's go ahead and get to work all these cylinders on this backhoe are pretty much all the same so if you need to replace the seals in a, another cylinder uh you know it should be pretty similar um, and always when you're working on this uh make sure you have uh whatever you're working on the bucket uh, the boom whatever you got it supported so when you bust those lines off that hydraulic cylinder nothing will fall on you it's really important there um, in this case we don't have to worry about that uh, there's no pressure on anything we'll go ahead and bust uh, this bolt here off uh, and then we should be able to drop the pin off we can pivot this cylinder around <coughs> tap that pin down just like that let's we'll see what that looks like here it is now we should be able to pull this cylinder out just like that go ahead and bust these lines loose if we'll need those loose to pull the cylinder out and put it back in all right now that we're underneath here we can bust these lines loose here <clears throat> if i go ahead and just take them all the way off that way it's easier to pull this cylinder out All right, now that we got those lines off, we, don't to, we can pull this shaft right out of there. Uh, before we do that, there is a set screw on all these cylinders right there. Just a quarter inch hex bolt. Or you want to make sure you get that out before you try to start unscrewing this cap. Usually not in there too tight. It just keeps this uh, ring from spinning all right just a little set screw there and i'll show you this handy tool that i bought just for this thing got this thing off amazon it wasn't too bad uh, this will get all these rings off these cylinders so if you're working on one of these here is I guess a part number on it or whatever. You can look it up on Amazon. So it's got two different uh, nipples on here. One for the bigger cylinders and one for the smaller. We'll be using a smaller one on this one. And it's got a spot for your three quarter inch ratchet. So you just snap it in there. Usually you have four holes on these. So just get two of them across from each other. Then I'll try to break it loose. Sometimes it's pretty tight. Yeah, there we go sucker was on there but we got it a lot of times if you just beat around there it'll kind of loosen up some stuff so that's nice great success there we go 
There she is. All right, there we have it. You can kind of tell in there. It's uh, a little rusted there. It always kind of rusts on that first thread. And you can kind of tell in there a little bit. It's just kind of seized up. So usually if you bang on it for a while, it kind of breaks it loose. So go ahead and pull it on out of there. Just like so. We'll take this thing over to the bench and uh, put some new seals in it. All right, guys, we got her on the workbench here. Uh, we'll start disassembling that here in a second. Uh, if you've been watching some of my videos of this tractor, uh, still working on it I really haven't had any time since that last video to work on it so I'll be working on this tractor soon since I'll have a lot more time this uh, winter time so stay tuned for that uh, all right let's go ahead and get back to work on this cylinder all right first thing we're gonna do is bust this piston off with a rod uh, to inch and an eighth socket will get it off usually a good impact will knock it off like so always nice to have somewhere clean to put your parts when you're taking them apart especially if you're doing it for the first time and it goes for anything it pulls right off then we can go ahead and pull this off the rod that's what's leaking on this thing, the seals inside here. Uh, as you can kind of see in there, they're pretty tore up. Got my seal kit here. Should have everything we need to replace all the seals in this. Let's go ahead and bust that open. This should also have a diagram, yes really shows you how to put all those seals in or which way they go here's the main seals that are probably leaking on us right here you can really see how bad that seal is right there All right, it's uh, nice to have a little pick set there to get these seals out. Probably all you need and maybe a little flathead screwdriver. We'll just go ahead and try to remove all these seals. This is the dust seal here or what's left of it. As you can tell, that seal is completely gone compared to the new one. There's actually two O-rings here. Well, an O-ring and a seal. And there should be two more seals, I believe, in here. This thing is just totally destroyed, that seal. There's one more seal in there, if you can see it. All right, well, 
should be all the seals. Next thing we're gonna wanna do is to clean this up real good and then we'll reassemble all the O-rings and seals in it. Just get this uh, land all cleaned up here. Take a wire brush to it or whatever. We got it all cleaned up. Uh, all I gotta do is um, blow it out a little bit with some compressed air. All right, we should be good to go to reassemble all our seals. So let's get to it. All right, we got everything cleaned up really good. Uh, so we'll go ahead and start assembling these seals back. Go ahead and start with the rod seal here. I'm looking at my instructions here. Uh, this buffer seal that they send with it is not going to work. It said basically any cylinder that's older than 1990 that you don't use that seal because uh, it's not machined down here for it. So I'm just going to go ahead and reuse the old one, which looks looks fine. So. But let's go ahead and put this rod seal in. You want to make sure that the lip is facing like that toward the back of that or toward the piston. Just get you a little cup of hydraulic oil or whatever and make it lube these seals up, make everything slide in a little easier. Sometimes a little hard to get in, but just maneuvering them back and forth try not to tear anything kind of got to bend them around there we go just keep working with it and they usually will pop in there it looks good you can't always check this make sure it's seated in there right which looks perfect and we'll put our buffering ring back in there that's how it came out it's got that little groove in it you want it just like that from what my instructions say you don't even need it but we'll just re we'll just put this one back anyway can't hurt There she is. I don't really know what you call this thing, but we'll go ahead and put this thing back in. That's an easy one. Just slide right in there. We'll go ahead and put our dust seal in. Looks good. Got that all seated. Just lube it up a little bit. Just like that. And we'll push that down. And all that's left is this O-ring. That's how it should look. All in all, it's pretty simple to do this. Just take your time with it. Make sure you get all your seals seated well. And it looks like we're good to go. And just make sure you got plenty of lube on it. That way nothing gets torn when you shove it back on the rod got all the seals in that gland done 
Now we'll move on to the piston here, which is super simple. All right, all we got left here is replace the seals on this piston, which is pretty easy. Remove these here. All right. Just wipe this thing down. Should be pretty clean. Go ahead and put this rubber seal in first. Just make sure we lube it up good. This new seal, it's kind of got a little split in it. That way you can get it over this piston. Just like that. And this is the last seal we got here. Go ahead and lube it up too. There we have it. All right, now I'm gonna make sure that our shaft here is all cleaned up, no debris on it. That way when we slide this gland on that it ain't gonna tear any of the new seals we got. A little hydraulic fluid on there, we'll get it started. Hydraulic oil on all the seals. Just like so. All right, we'll go ahead and throw our piston on here. Just like so. I'm sure there's a torque spec for this, but I just run it down with the impact and bump it a few times. Never had any problem with it. All right, just like that. All right, now we're good to go to go install it back on the backhoe. All right, before we uh, install this back in here, you can kind of tell there's a little bit of rust on the bottom here or debris so we'll just buff that off real good and make sure that's all clean before we push everything back in there so we don't rip any of our seals even on the outside here where it kind of rusted that's why we had such a hard time getting that cap off so it usually just rust right up here All right, we got it all buffed down really good. Real nice and smooth. We'll just make sure we get any debris out here. We'll go ahead and take some more hydraulic fluid here and just kind of lube everything up. Make sure it slides in really easy. We to make sure we got plenty fluid on this piston too and all these seals. You just gotta watch out this seal here make sure you get it in or it'll kind of pop out so just make sure it's down flush all right just kind of 
kind of wiggle it back and forth and it should go in. There we go. All right, we got her in there. Uh, let's make sure we get this shaft cleaned up after handling it. That way, won't mess up any of our seals here. We can slide this on in. Make sure we. There we go. Looks like that, and then we should be able to just screw this in. Bit easier after getting them threads cleaned up really nice all right we're good to go we'll get that started good there so we'll go ahead and tighten this ring up um, it'll only tighten so far where that set screw finds its hole so once you get there that's all you need to tighten it up and you put your little screw in and you're good to go so Go ahead and speed this up a little bit. You should be able to see here. We got the uh, holes lined up for that set screw. Go ahead and screw her in there. Okay. Just snug that down. And there, that's all there is to it. We'll just uh, reassemble everything here and then we'll try it out. All right, we got her all back together. We got this bolt pin in here, bolt tight. Got the, both the lines here tightened up. All right, let's fire this thing up. Uh, topped off the hydraulic oil, so let's give her a shot. <laughs> Looks like we're good to go on this cylinder, not leaking anymore. So we can put her back to work. All right, guys, uh, thanks for watching uh, this video. Uh, if it helped you out any, give me a thumbs up, please. And uh, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Uh, see more videos on this backhoe. And uh, you know, as I need to repair stuff, I'll make videos on that. So thanks again for watching. We'll see you next time.